Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I am one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am back to do another new release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that are coming out on Tuesday, September 18th. So the first book that I have for you guys is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith or JK Rowling. This is the fourth book in the Cormoran Strike series. If you somehow aren't aware JK Rowling started writing a mystery series under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. I've been reading them and really enjoying them and now there's a new book out. When Billy, a troubled young man, comes to Corman Strike's office to ask for help in investigating a crime that he believed he witnesses when he was a child, Strike is left deeply unsettled. While Billy is clearly mentally distressed and can't remember too many concrete details, there is something about him and his story. But before Strike can question him any further, Billy leaves the office in a panic. Trying to get to the bottom of Billy's story, Strike and Robin, his once assistant and now partner, set off on a twisting trail that leads them through the back streets of London into a secretive inner sanctum in Parliament and to a beautiful but sinister manor in the countryside. And during this investigation, Strike's own life is far from straightforward. His newfound fame as a private eye means that he can no longer operate behind the scenes like he used to. Plus, his relationship with Robin is more fraught than it has ever been before. So yeah, if you are a fan of mystery novels and you haven't checked out the series yet, I highly recommend it. JK Rowling is just a really great writer and she brings that to this great mystery series. I'm a big fan of it. I've already like pre-ordered it and will be getting it on day one. I always buy these books immediately and read them immediately because I love them so so much. So if you are a fan of this Corman Strike series, Lethal White is out today. Next I have our sponsor for this video and that is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. At a gala thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times and each day Aiden Bishop is too late to save her. Doomed to repeat the same day over and over again, Aiden Bishop's only escape is to solve the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle. However, nothing and no one is what it seems. So this is a debut novel from Stuart Turton and it's been getting a lot of praise from a lot of different mystery writers including E.J. Finn and Sarah Pinneborough. This is being described as a genre-bending novel that is a combination of Agatha Christie, meets Groundhog Day with a dash of Quantum Leap. So if you are a fan of mystery novels, if you want a book that will keep you guessing until the very last page, then you can pick up The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and thanks so much to them for sponsoring this video. The next book that I have for you guys is Washington Black by Essie Adugian. George Washington Black, or Wash, is an 11 year old field slave in Barbados and he is terrified to be chosen by his master's brother as his manservant. To his surprise, the eccentric Christopher Wilde turns out to be a naturalist, explorer, inventor, and abolitionist. Soon, Wash is initiated into a world where a flying machine can take people around the world, where even a boy born in chains can embrace a life of dignity and meaning, and where two people separated by an impossible divide can begin to see each other as human. But when a man is killed and a bounty is placed on Wash's head, Christopher and Wash must leave everything behind. What follows is their flight across the eastern coast of America and finally to a remote outpost in the Arctic. What brings Christopher and Wash together will tear them apart, propelling Wash even further across the globe to find his true self. So I've heard really fantastic things about this book. It's already come out, I know for sure in the UK, I'm not sure in other countries as well, and it was recently longlisted for the Man Booker Prize. So if you are a fan of historical fiction novels, this is one that I definitely have on my radar, and again that's called Called Washington Black. Next I have The Impossible Girl by Lydia King. In Manhattan in 1850, born out of wedlock to a wealthy socialite and a nameless immigrant, Coralie can mingle with the rich just as easily as she can disappear into the slums and graveyards in the city. As the only female resurrectionist in New York, she's carved out a niche procuring bodies afflicted with the strangest of anomalies. Anatomists will pay extraordinary sums for these specimens, dissecting and displaying them for the eager public. Cora's specialty is not only profitable, it's a means of keeping her finger on the pulse for the people who are searching for her. She's the girl born with two hearts. 
a legend among grave robbers and anatomists, and is sought after as an endangered prize. Now, as a series of murders unfolds closer and closer to Cora, she can no longer trust those she holds dear, including the young medical students that she's fallen for, because someone has no intention of waiting for Cora to die of a natural death. So if you are a fan of slightly creepy historical slight mysteries this one sounds like it would be a really good one to read in the fall like leading up to halloween it has sort of an eerie sense to it so again that one is called the impossible girl next i have pride by evie zoboy zuri has pride brooklyn pride family pride and pride in her afro latino roots but pride might not be enough to save her rapidly gentrifying neighborhood from becoming unrecognizable. When the wealthy Darcy family moves in across the street, Zuri wants nothing to do with the two teenage sons, even as her older sister Jane starts to fall for the charming Ansley. She especially can't stand the judgmental and arrogant Darius. Yet, as Zuri and Darius are forced to find common ground, their initial dislike shifts into an unexpected understanding. So, if you couldn't tell by the description of that story, this is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So, if you are a fan of Pride and Prejudice retellings like I am, um, or if you read Ibiza Boy's other books and you really enjoyed them, she wrote the book American Street that came out last year and was, I believe, shortlisted for the National Book Prize um, or the National Book Award, then you should put Pride on your list. Next, I have A Times Convert by Deborah Harkness. On the battlefield of the American Revolution, Matthew de Claremont meets Marcus McNeil, a young surgeon from Massachusetts. When Matthew offers him a chance at immorality and a new life free from his puritanical upbringing, Marcus seizes the opportunity to become a vampire. But his transformation is not an easy one, and the ancient traditions and responsibilities of the de Claremont family clashes with Marcus's deeply held beliefs in liberty, equality, and brotherhood. Fast forward to contemporary Paris, where Phoebe Taylor, the young employee at Sotheby's whom Marcus has fallen for, is about to embark on her own journey of immortality. Though the modernized version of this process at first seems uncomplicated, the couple discovers that the challenges facing a person wanting to become immortal is no less formidable than it was in the 18th century. The shadows that Marcus believed that he had left behind long ago may return to haunt them both forever. So Deborah Harkness is a best-selling fantasy writer. She's probably best well known for the series that starts with A Discovery of Witches. And this is a spin-off told from the perspective of Marcus, who is Matthew's son. If you've read the books, then you know who I'm talking about. So if you are a fan of the series and of Deborah Harkness, then you can go ahead and pick up A Times Convert today. Next, I have a memoir for you guys, and that is Heartland by Sarah Smarsh. During Sarah Smarsh's turbulent childhood in Kansas during the 1980s and 90s, the forces of cyclical poverty and the country's changing economic policies solidified her family's place among the country's poor. By telling the story of her life and the life of the people that she loves, Smarsh challenges us to look more closely at the class divide in our country and examine the myths about people thought to be less just because they earn less. Her personal history affirms the impact that intergenerational poverty can have on individuals, families, and communities, and she explores this idea as lived experience, metaphor, and level of consciousness. So this memoir is basically an eye-opening look at what it's like to be part of a working class poor family in the Midwest in the United States, and what Sarah Smarsh is doing is bringing her own experiences to talk about some of the long-held ideas about this class of people and basically is challenging us to look at them and look at the situations around us much more differently. And again, that's called Heartland by Sarah Smarsh. And last but certainly not least is A Labyrinth of Spirits by Carlo Ruiz Zafron. Nine-year-old Alicia lost her parents during the Spanish Civil War when the fascists savagely bombed Barcelona in 1938. 20 years later and she is still bears the emotional and physical scars from that violent and terrifying time. Weary of her work as an investigator amongst Spain's secret police, a job that she's had for more than a decade, the 29-year-old is ready to move on. At the insistence of her boss, she remains to solve one last case. The mysterious disappearance of Spain's Minister of Culture, Mauricio Valls, with her partner, the intimidating policeman Juan Manuel Vargas, 
Alicia discovers a possible clue. A rare book by the author Victor Matax hidden in Ball's office in his Madrid mansion. Balls was the director of this infamous prison in Barcelona during World War II, where several writers were imprisoned, including David Martin and Victor Matax. Traveling to Barcelona on a trail of these writers, Alicia and Vargas meet with several booksellers, including Juan Sempre, who knew her parents. So this is the fourth book in the Cemetery of Forgotten Souls series that Carlos Ruiz Saffron has written. The first book in the series is The Shadow of the Wind, and I know so many people who love it, including myself. Um, so if you have been keeping up with this series, the fourth book is finally out, so you can go ahead and pick that up today. And again, that's called Labyrinth of the Spirits. So those are all of the books that I have for you guys this week. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you plan on picking up if you are interested in any of the books I mentioned here today, or if there's another book coming out today that you are super hyped about. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye!